Today we're going to go over an update on the TRX4 VS410 build as well as calculating overall gearing. What's going on everyone? Today I've got the VS410 TRX4 build back on the bench. Now, in a previous video, I kind of went over this build and this is where I took a set of TRX4 axles and put it together on a Vanquish VS410 chassis kit. Now, this build basically consists of the chassis kit, a set of original TRX4 Defender axles that I locked so they don't have the selectable differentials anymore. From there, it uses an SCX102 link kit with two new links for the front drag link and pan hard. Those are available on the website now. They're stainless conversion specifically for using TRX4 axles under the VS410 chassis. I have swapped to the production links on here compared to the ones that I showed in that first video. Now with the VS410 chassis kit, it is made for a standard three gear style transmission and I have used that. From there, we also have SCX102 drive shafts and I've also made a number of other changes. In the first video I showed using a set of Traxxas big bore shocks and I actually had set those up like I was talking about with a set of mini T springs, but I didn't like the overall ride height. So I changed to a set of incision 90 millimeter scale shocks just to get me the ride height that I liked. And at this point, I'm pretty happy with that part. There has been a few other changes with the electronics as well. I am still running the Castle Mamba X and a Holmes Hobbies 35 500 kV Polar Pro, but I did change out the servo to a Fataba A700. This is a 1,027 ounce inch servo. I still have that BLS 152 in the dig servo position, which is still way overkill, but I just haven't found something to actually replace that. The other thing that I did is I changed out that Gen's Ace 2200 milliamp battery for the 4300 milliamp Gen's Ace LiPo, which is actually a LiPo high voltage setup, so a LIHV battery. This is very similar to most LiPo batteries, but has some increased stability for higher voltages. So if you just charge this to it like a normal LiPo battery, you wouldn't hit that same capacity of 4,300 milliamps. It would actually be reduced from there. But overall, it's still a really good pack size. And if you do have a charger that's capable of charging a lithium high volt, then it's a really nice pack to have. Everything on the truck is still being controlled by my Fataba 4PV, and I'm using a 2106 GF receiver. But from there, the biggest hurdle with this build is gearing, overall gearing, basically. Now we've got TRX4 axles on here and a standard axial three gear transmission. Those two things come from very different trucks and there's some things that we really need to look at because if you just combine those two things, your overall gearing is going to be way off. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over how you calculate overall gearing. So if you're building a custom truck with maybe parts and pieces from different vehicles, you can put together something that is going to be in the ballpark of where you need it right out of the gate. Calculating overall gearing is just a combination of some very simple math operations. I did a video recently about calculating overdrive percentages and this one overall is quite a bit more simple than that one. Calculating a gear ratio is as simple as taking the output gear and dividing it by the input gear. Generally in an RC car, the output gear is the larger gear, the input gear is the smaller. That's at least in an electric RC like we're dealing with here where we're trying to reduce the speed from the motor down to the actual tires. These motors can spin at tens of thousands of RPMs and we need to reduce that down to something much more reasonable at the tires. So to get this thing where we need it, we need to look at what we have and try and figure out where we need to get to. If we kind of work from the bottom and go up, we've got TRX4 axles on here. Now these have a portal reduction and a ring and pinion reduction. The portal boxes are a 23 tooth output gear and a 10 tooth input gear, giving us a 2.3 to one reduction. Then if you're running a stock ring and pinion or a machined upgrade, but the same ratio, you've got a 34 tooth ring gear and 11 tooth pinion gear. That gives us 3.09 to one. If you take that portal ratio and the ring and pinion ratio and you multiply those two together, you get an overall ratio of the axles of 7.11 to one. So 7.11 rotations of the drive shaft will equal one rotation at the tires. Now, if you compare that to an Axial SCX-102 axle, it doesn't have a portal box and it just has an eight tooth pinion and a 30 tooth ring gear, giving us a 3.75 to one ratio. So we have a big difference between those two axles. And that's why using an 
axial style transmission in the center doesn't work right out of the box with something like TRX4 axles. A stock TRX4 Sport transmission has an overall ratio of 5.1 to 1. And if we're comparing that to a stock three gear transmission like we have here with a 54 tooth spur gear and a 13 tooth pinion gear, we get a 10.8 to one difference. So we've got almost a two to one difference between a stock TRX4 Sport and an axial three gear style. The internal ratios of a TRX4 Sport versus a three gear are not that much different though. The main difference is in the pinion and spur gear. The TRX4 Sport internal transmission ratio is 2.22 to one, where a standard three gear is 2.6 to one. So they do have some difference, but it's not as substantial as this overall difference that we're seeing at this point. But why that's good news is because really all we have to do then is adjust pinion and spur to get us exactly where we wanna be. The TRX4 Sport, just bone stock out of the box, has a 36.25 to one total ratio. So that means 36.25 revolutions of the pinion gear will give us one revolution at the tire. Now, over years of running trucks and things like this, I've found that I personally like to have an overall ratio closer in that 40 to one to 50 to one ratio. Somewhere in there is usually where I like based on the motor and speed controls, voltages, things like that, that I run. Overall, I think it's just a safe area to be. I like the wheel speed and the torque that I get with the typical electronics that I choose to run. So rather than shooting for that stock 36.25 to one ratio that a TRX4 Sport has, I'm gonna try and shoot more for my preferred range between that 40 and 50 to one. So right now where we sit is stock geared TRX4 axles and stock geared three gear transmission in the middle. So we're gonna calculate the overall ratio that we have right now. So we've got a 54 tooth spur gear and a 13 tooth pinion gear currently. That gives us a ratio of 4.15 to one for the spur and pinion. Then we've got the internal ratio of the transmission. That is a 20 tooth drive gear and a 52 tooth output gear. There is a gear between those two gears. However, when you have a three gear system like that, the value of the middle gear doesn't matter at all. So that 20 and the 52 gives us the 2.6 to one. So when we take that 4.15 to one and the 2.6 to one and multiply those two together, we get a total transmission ratio of 10.8 to one. So then we take that 10.8 to one and we multiply it times the 7.11 to one of these axles and we get a ratio of 76.78 to one. Obviously that's much higher than that 40 to 50 range that I'm looking for and much, much higher than the 36 to one that the stock TRX4 Sport has. So what we need to do is look at changing the spur and pinion values to get down to an area that matches our goal. Now the stock TRX4 TRX4 Sport runs a 17 tooth pinion and a 39 tooth spur gear. We can't just match those two numbers though, even though that would probably get us really close to where we want to be. We can't do that because that 39 tooth spur gear is just much too small to work on a standard three gear transmission. So we need to kind of try and find a center to center distance between the center of the pinion shaft and the center of the spur gear shaft that is similar or works within the adjustment range that our transmission offers. Now, if you're just trying to do this high level without having the parts in front of you and testing things like that, you can go find a gear calculator that will give you center to center distance based on the gear sizes that you input plus a little bit of wiggle room, basically the room between your gears so you have a decent gear mesh. So if I took and input the 5413 gearing that I have here, it will give me a pretty close approximate gear distance that I have right now. So even though I have a basic idea of what gear combinations will fit, just for the sake of being complete, I plugged those two numbers in and I get a center to center distance of about 1.05 inches. So now I can look at different combinations and try and keep within a fairly close distance to there and know that the combination of gears that I choose will inevitably fit. So what I did is I have a spreadsheet with all of these calculations that we've been going over so I don't have to keep redoing them by hand and I plugged in different combinations to try and get me within that range that I'm ultimately looking for. At that same time, I was making sure that any of the values that I plugged in for my pinion and spur gear were products that were made and available and were going to bolt onto the transmission that I already have. 
That's one thing that you can't overlook. You can come up with this perfect setup, but in the end, if you actually can't buy the parts, it didn't do you any good. So with a little bit of experimenting, I came up with a combination of parts that will give me a 50 tooth spur gear and a 20 tooth pinion gear. These are two parts that are readily available. The spur gear is available from Kimbro right now, which is basically the same gear that I have on there with a different tooth count. And the 20 tooth pinion gear I can find from multiple manufacturers, but looks like Robinson Racing has a steel version that's going to work out well. Both of those products I'll pick up from A-Main and should be able to have them here within just a few days. That 2050 spur and pinion setup that I'm using will give me a 2.5 to one ratio. Multiply that times the 2.6 to one internal ratio of the transmission and that gives me 6.5 to one. So we've lowered that quite a bit from the 10.8 that the transmission had with the larger spur and pinion. Now that 6.5 to one is still a little bit deeper ratio than the 5.1 to one that the stock TRX4 transmission has. It's about a difference of 24%. So I'm gonna slow the overall wheel speed down on this truck 24% compared to if I just threw this 3500 kV system into a TRX4 Sport. But again, I'm just fine with that. I've had experience with this same gear ratios and this type of system. It's gonna be plenty fast for me. If we take that 6.5 to one gear ratio of that transmission, multiply it by the 7.11 gear ratio that we have in the axles, we're gonna come up with a total ratio of 46.2 to one. Again, that puts me right close to the middle of that 40 to 50 to one range that I prefer. Now I could have played around with that pinion and spur range if I wanted to get closer to that 40 to one uh, number that so I was closer to a stock TRX4 Sport, but I didn't and for more than one reason. Something I've been contemplating is taking the TRX4 Sport budget build off truck, which is on the shelf back there and actually swapping those axles into this truck. The reason is, is that that truck is built with overdrive and underdrive gear sets, as well as chromoly axle shafts all the way around. I'm not sure that I'm ready to cannibalize the TRX4 Sport budget build-off truck, but at the same time, I think that I would really enjoy having those axles underneath of this build more so than anything else. The reason why that whole discussion was important is because when you change overdrive or underdrive gear sets, it changes your overall ratio. It just changes one of those numbers that we plugged in in a different spot to get the overall number. So rather than going through and calculating everything, I'll just tell you what the different ratios of those ring and pinion gears would be and how they would change our overall ratio. The overdrive gears for the front axle are a 33-12, and that's a ratio of 2.75 to one. So that 2.75 to one is faster than the 3.09 stock ratio. And once we calculate that throughout the final ratio, we come to a total of 41.11 to one. Still keeps me in that ballpark of that 40 to 50 to one range. So we're in good shape. Now the rear axle, the underdrive gears are a 35 tooth ring gear and a 10 tooth pinion, giving us a 3.5 to one ratio. That would be slower than the 3.09 factory ratio. And that gives us an overall final of 52.33 to one. A little bit over the 50, but the average of the faster front and the slower rear will give us a driving experience pretty close to what I'm used to. The calculated overdrive percentage with using both underdrive and overdrive is right at 24%. Now, if you wanna get into how to calculate overdrive, you can go back to the previous video that I did where I swapped the portal axle into the rear of my VS410 Pro. There, I go through all of the calculations and how it's done to calculate overdrive. So that's how I went through and determined what parts I needed to swap into the three gear transmission that's here in this build so that I can run these TRX4 Sport axles. If you didn't wanna do all the math, you could easily just start buying a bunch of spur and pinion gears and playing around with it until you got somewhere where you wanted. For me, I was able to put together a spreadsheet to kind of figure out all of this faster than I was even able to explain it on video. So it saved me the time of having to buy extra parts or anything like that. Now I can just buy only what I needed and in the end, I'm confident that I'll have basically exactly what I want. One thing that is important to know is that the three gear transmission that I've got in here is built with all Vanquish and Incision parts. And specifically what's important is the Incision Slipper Eliminator that I'm using. 
that has got two different bolt patterns on it that allow you to bolt on a lot of standard spur gears. You'll find that a lot of standard spur gears have setups with three holes or that look almost like Swiss cheese. Those Swiss cheese ones usually have both of the bolt patterns that you'll see on the incision slipper eliminator. So you'll be able to bolt that thing up in multiple ways. But if you find a spur gear that only has three screw holes, most likely it's going to bolt up to this top shaft. If you were using a stock axial style top shaft that used the hexagon style slipper plates, you're gonna have a more difficult time doing this same conversion. So that's one thing that's important to know is making sure whatever parts you're trying to swap on are compatible with whatever items you're using at the time. Now, if you go to my website, harleydesigns.com, I'll have a full build breakdown of this truck. And in there, it'll have a full parts list of everything that I'm using at the time, as well as a collection of any videos that the truck has been featured in. I also have a ton of my other vehicles on my website, broken down just the same. Collection of the videos, all of the parts used, and you know some blurbs about how it came to be or whatnot. On that same page, I'll go through and put the gear calculations in there that I used to calculate what we have here. And as always, if you have any questions, absolutely just drop them in the comments below. I'll happily get you an answer as soon as I can. I still have a lot of things that I wanna to do to this truck cosmetically, but I think our running gear could be sorted fairly quickly, especially if I decide to do an axle swap with my other TRX4 Sport back there. I still have plans for some tube work, especially in the bed area. I'd like to do a simple interior and maybe some front wheel wells. The paint that I ended up putting on here is a Tamiya metallic blue. I even painted this myself. As you can tell, it's one color, which I know is brave, but I think that it ended up turning out all right. I even backed the blue with silver. As you can tell, my skills are improving by the day. But that's all we have for this one, guys. Hopefully another math lesson wasn't too soon for many of you. I appreciate you guys watching the last one, giving me a lot of good comments, some good debates that we had in there for people that had different opinions or different ideas on how originally they were supposed to calculate overdrive. It's always fun to discuss that. And I think this one is something much more simple, but maybe something that will help a lot of you custom builders who are just kind of maybe starting to dive into there and want to try and you know, pick your parts and things like that beforehand, rather than just buying, putting it together and seeing if it works. A little bit of work on the front end of a build can really save you some time and money on a long custom build process. But as always guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next one.